Football season has officially begun, but even if you aren't a football fan, I've got a fun video for you today. I'm going to be sharing with you some recipes and ideas that would be great for a game day gathering or tailgating, or really any kind of party that you might find yourself attending or hosting. This video is in collaboration with McKenzie over at Carla McKenzie, and she takes you inside all kinds of stores, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target, so many more to show you what's new and what's going on there. And she and her husband recently started a new channel where they are sharing recipes, so they're gonna have some game day ideas for you as well. And also, with Jessica over at Jessica O'Donohue. She has a really lovely, beautiful channel to watch. She shares lots of Southern inspired cooking. And if you like the kind of stuff that I make here, you're gonna like what she has to offer as well. She also does some really beautiful home decor and decorating videos. So when you are done watching this video, be sure to check out those channels. I will leave them linked in the description box below and let them know that I sent you. And if you are arriving here from McKinsey or Jessica's channels. Welcome. We are so glad to have you. I hope that you will stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Here on See Mindy Mom, it is all about what is going on in my kitchen to feed my family of five. I have been married to my husband Daniel for 16 years. <laughs> and we have three children who are 13, almost 10, and almost 9. I share lots of different ideas for budget meals, for quick and easy meals, for shortcut meals, crock pot meals, sheet pan and one pan meals, lunch preps, kids lunches, you name it. If it's going on in my kitchen, I'm usually showing you. So we'd love to have you. Thank you so much for stopping by. I was perusing through Pinterest, just looking for some inspiration or maybe some new ideas, things that I haven't made before, maybe things I haven't seen that are sort of outside the regular game day or tailgating food. And I came across several ideas that I thought were not only easy and pretty budget friendly, but were also kid friendly. And I thought, you know, that's a great tack to take because a lot of us are attending picnics or parties or tailgates, or we're hosting game day at our house. And a lot of times there will be kids present, right? I mean, we either have kids or we're spending time with people who have kids. So sometimes it's nice to have some things that are very friendly to them. I've actually already been working on the first recipe, if you can even call it a recipe. <laughs> it's really just putting ingredients together. I guess that is what a recipe is. But anyway, the first thing that I wanna to share to you, I have already been working on, and it's basically an Italian skewer. And if you watch my channel, you will not be surprised that one of the ingredients is one of my favorite shortcut budget ingredients, and that is frozen cheese tortellini. I cooked those on the stove according to the package directions, but just to al dente. I let them cook for three minutes in boiling water, and then I immediately drained them and rinsed them in cool water so that they would cool down and stop cooking. The other ingredients that I am using are salami, and I'm gonna use some mozzarella cheese sticks that I'm slicing up into little pieces. You could sub a different kind of cheese or maybe a mozzarella pearl. And I'm going to use grape tomatoes. You could use olives if you wanted to. We're not olive fans here, so I opted for a tomato instead. And all I did after I cooked the tortellini and cleaned the tomatoes and then chopped up the mozzarella sticks was assemble all of the ingredients on just a regular toothpick. I played around with the order of the ingredients to figure out what I thought would be the best order for making it secure and also making everything fit. And for me, that meant putting the salami on the bottom and the tomato on the top and then the tortellini and the little piece of cheese in the middle in no particular order. I have those all just sitting in a glass casserole dish that I have a lid for and they are chilling in the refrigerator, ready to bring out or take somewhere. And I think everybody will really enjoy those. I thought that was a really good spin on a finger food, especially one that would be great for a party or for a tailgate. And I haven't seen that before. The next thing I'm gonna get started on is a really simple little cracker sandwich. And I think that this is sort of a take on those sandwiches that you make on the Hawaiian rolls with ham and Swiss. And there's like a buttery sauce with poppy seeds over the top. Do you know what I'm talking about? I thought this was a really interesting take on that idea, but much smaller, which is great because sometimes when we're at a party or we're at a tailgate, there are lots of options and we wanna have like little small bites so we can sample just about everything on the spread. 
I accidentally got the whole wheat Ritz crackers or the great value version of those. I think this would probably be better with the traditional, but we're gonna make it work. I'm gonna need about three of the four sleeves that are in here, I think. And then I have one little container of ultra thin honey ham and one package of sliced Swiss. And I'm going to use my pizza cutter to slice this up and just to little thin strips that I can set on top of the crackers. And I'm also gonna slice up my Swiss cheese into little squares. And this is also one of those that you can change up. I thought about making it turkey and Swiss instead since we prefer turkey to ham. You could also do maybe like a roast beef and cheddar. I thought about a pepperoni and mozzarella, but since I was doing the Italian skewers, I just decided that I would stick with the traditional ham and Swiss. I am changing up the sauce recipe to suit our tastes or what I think we will like. So I'm gonna use six tablespoons of butter, which I will melt. And then I will add to that one teaspoon each. Actually, I'm gonna do two teaspoons of Worcestershire and one of Dijon mustard. I'm gonna do half a teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. And to sprinkle over the top of the crackers, I'm actually gonna use some of this everything but the bagel seasoning instead of the poppy seeds. And then pop them into the oven. I'm gonna bake those in the oven at 350. I'm gonna check on them at about eight minutes. We'll see, it should take about 10 to 12 minutes. These little ham and Swiss cracker sandwiches, really good. Definitely best served warm. So it might be something you would wanna make when you're hosting and you can actually serve them right out of the oven. Well, once they cool down enough to eat, but really good. The crackers aren't crunchy. They kind of soak up some of the like butter, the sauce, the cheese, but good. I feel like a party or game day spread would not be complete without a few sweet treats, right? I am going to make some really easy pretzel s'mores. These look delicious. We are huge s'mores fans all year long. We make them all different kinds of ways here in our household. So I'm excited to try these out. And I made sure that I got the pretzel snaps by Snyder. They are little square pretzels, not to be confused with the butter snaps, which are something different. I also got regular size marshmallows and I got just traditional Hershey's chocolate bars, the kind that you can break into little bitty rectangular squares. And that's what we're gonna use to assemble our s'mores all at once on a sheet pan. I have my oven preheating to 400 and I'm just gonna start laying out some of these pretzel snaps into a single layer on my baking sheet. I have already taken my chocolate bars and broken them up into little pieces. I could not remember how many of those little pieces are in just a traditional Hershey's bar. It's 12. Well, I mean, it's 11 after the chocolate tax was paid to me. So I have those all ready. Now I'm just putting one big old marshmallow on top of each one of these crackers, or not crackers, pretzels. <laughs> and I'm a little worried. I went with the regular traditional marshmallows instead of doing like two or three mini ones. Now I'm wondering if these are just gonna be too big, but we'll see. I'm going to finish putting these on the pretzels and then I'm going to pop them into the oven and I'm just gonna stand there and watch. Marshmallows are really persnickety, I think, when it comes to heating them up and using them you know, in different kinds of desserts as opposed to just roasting them over a fire. So I don't know if it's gonna take just a couple of minutes or if it's gonna take seven or eight minutes, but we shall see. Basically when they start to melt and puff up, I'll know it's time for them to come out of the oven. You know what else might work with these that are a little bit larger than the pretzel snaps or than a regular pretzel twist? are the pretzel thins. Is that what they're called? I'll pop a picture up here of those. And they have those sometimes in the generic at Aldi as well, but I feel like those are a little bit wider and might better suit this recipe. Also, you could add a little dab of peanut butter if you wanted to drizzle you know, a little caramel or maybe use a Rolo instead of a Hershey. That would give it like the caramel that comes in, in the Rolo, so it would be like a marshmallow car caramel chocolate pretzel combination. <laughs> Just some ideas I'm throwing out there. It might take a little bit of experimentation with this one. We're back and I have to move fast, so I am using two hands to put one of the little squares of chocolate and then another marshmallow on top of that so that the chocolate will melt on the marshmallow and attach the other pretzel. I left my marshmallows in the oven for about five minutes and now I'm definitely thinking I should have gone with the mini marshmallows because these are very large. I'm not sure uh, that I'm gonna be able to get these separated from each other, but we'll just see. I gotta finish constructing them and then I'm gonna let them cool down and we'll see if I can pull them apart. It may just be really messy s'mores, but maybe if you try this, get some of the little mini marshmallows and just put like two or three little mini marshmallows 
on top of each of the pretzels before they go into the oven. And that might be a better marshmallow to pretzel ratio <laughs> than uh, what I did here, but we shall see, we'll see. I mean, it's a s'more, it's supposed to be messy, am I right? On this channel, I try to be helpful, kind, positive, and realistic. And if I am being realistic, I have to admit that sometimes something doesn't work out. Sometimes there's a recipe that I don't execute well, or maybe there's one that we just don't care for. It doesn't happen all the time. It actually doesn't even happen that often, but it does happen. So with the pretzel s'mores, they taste wonderful. I just overestimated how big those marshmallows were going to get. So I would say definitely use the smaller mini marshmallows, probably two, maybe three mini marshmallows on each pretzel square. And then I think these would be perfect. These would come out great. The last thing that I'm going to do is assemble a charcuterie tray. And I have some tips that I wanted to share with you. First off, snack boards or the fancy word charcuterie can be a great way to use up little odds and ends of things that you have in your pantry or your fridge. I'm talking talking about that half bag of baby carrots that we were packing in lunches this week or that handful of pretzels that's in the bag. So I have some things that are left over from the recipes that I made today. I still have some pretzels, I've got some crackers, we've got some salami and a little bit of tortellini. I'm gonna start with those things and then add maybe a little bit of fruit, maybe another couple kinds of cheeses and crackers that I can put on the tray to sort of round out this little snack board. The other thing that I wanted to share with you was this idea that I came across on the internet for how to make a charcuterie tray at home and have it travel easily with you. Because if you have a charcuterie board, I have a couple of them, it doesn't make very much sense to assemble it at home and then try to take it somewhere because stuff would just fall off. But the idea I saw was to use a tray like this one. And this would be something that you might find in the home office aisle at like a Walmart or a Target. You might also see them in the places where they have utensil holders like spoons and forks and knives. This is one I've actually had, it's still brand new, I've never used it, and I can't even remember where I got it, it's been that long, but I know that, that I had it, that I haven't used it, and I'm gonna use it today, so I'm just gonna wash it out with soap and water, dry it, and I'm going to cut some parchment pieces to go on the bottom here. And then all I have to do is assemble the things that I wanna put into my charcuterie, so I can put all of the vegetables and the cheese and the crackers and kind of arrange it in that little tray, cover it up and place it in the refrigerator until we are ready to go somewhere. And then when we are ready to go somewhere with it, it'll be really easy just to take that tray, put it down on the table or the counter or the tailgate, wherever it's going and not have everything spill out in the car on our way. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Mackenzie's channel and Jessica's channel. They are linked in the description box below. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.